Should I start again? Maybe I should start again. I'm gonna start again. Hello humans! Welcome to a D&D &D video. I had a look through my stuff and figured out one more thing that might be helpful to you that I wanted to tell ya. For all the people who are new here, this is my old filming spot. Welcome. This is gonna be shiny in the background. I'm sorry, don't worry about it. It's actually, it's uh, a big sheet of Perspex that I use for D&D. &D. It's, I have, I think I have some maps down here. So for example, sorry, my chair is so squeaky. This is why I started standing in videos. So these are a couple of pieces of uh, battle maps that I drew for the last session that we had. But you know, sometimes in the middle of a battle, you wanna be able to draw all over things. In this case, because the building was sunken and um, it was meant to be like a part of the problem, that it's really dark and they can't see anything. What I actually did, I hope I took some photos. I, I did, I took some photos because we had Skype people, so I can chuck those up on screen. I actually uh, laid out the map underneath the perspex and then colored over the top with black whiteboard markers. And then as they moved around or lit things, um, I could clear off bits of the whiteboard marker so they could see the room and it was miraculous. It was a lot of fun actually. So that's my big sheet of perspex and what it's for. And uh, this is my Donny Osmond calendar, potentially for familiar to people who follow me on Instagram. So anyway, what we're going to be talking about today is uh, my system for generating towns and cities and NPCs for them. I know some of you have asked questions about this. Um, it's something that could be really tricky if you don't know how to go about it. So let's take a look. We're going to start with this. Glass Tide, this is the uh, swamp fishing village, the small town that I've mentioned a thousand times in these videos that my players started in. What is necessary, I think, for both creating your society and for creating your NPCs is something I learned in ancient history in high school. It honestly, it got me through all of my exams like a breeze, uh, but you have to be ready to giggle because it is called the sperm principle. So sperm basically, it stands for social, political, economic, religious, and military. And the idea is that that covers all the most important spheres of a society and, and the areas that interact and coexist in order to create a society and uh, form how it works. And I have found it just super incredibly useful for designing any kind of a town or a city or society, I guess, for my D&D &D games. So you can see here, if I turn on uh, my top layers here, what I've got in Glass Tide is... So when I began, I knew that there would have to be a tavern for the players to stay in, so that's a great social hub. I knew I wanted there to be some kind of an interaction with the town hall, so that gives us a political location. And then finally, economic is something that's really easy to work out, even if you don't go in thinking that it's going to be super important to the adventure. It's still a good thing to work out to make your location believable. So for Glass Tide, uh, this was super obvious in terms of we know that uh, they run a ferry service and that's very important to the town's economy and uh, that they are a fishing village because it's much easier to fish in a swamp than it is to like grow a wheat farm or whatever. So that gives us three of the five uh, sperm areas. So we can begin building our town. So we can start with over here, we've got the boat sheds that services the, uh, the economic sector. We have the tavern, which services the social sector. And down here we have the town hall which has its part in the politics of Glass Tide. That starts to break up the town into different districts here. We've got the fishing precinct is its own area of the town. So we know that all the buildings that are in the fishing precinct are going to be more sort of trade buildings, things like that. Down here we have the public quarter, which houses the town hall, as well as uh, the markets and the church. Once again, our starting point was Pathfinder. So the temple here is a temple to Aristil, which eh, gives us our religious, doesn't? It. Yes, it does. We know that our social element is going to be the tavern, the fisherman's wake, and so we kind of want that to be a midpoint between where people work and where people live. Now, when we're thinking about where people live, this gives us uh, more distinct sort of suburbs, I guess, within the town. Even when it's a small town, you can kind of break it up. So here, thinking uh, in terms of class disparity, because that does kind of exist everywhere, no matter how small the town is, we have here our residential parts of town, the lower residential and the upper residential. I uh, did a cheeky little reference 
to uh, to old kingdom Egypt here uh, because Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt are actually it's kind of flipped as to how we would normally think of it. Lower Egypt is to the north, Upper Egypt is to the south, and it's because it's based on uh, the height of the land. And I felt like that would make sense for a swamp, and that would make sense for how they would divide up the space so people who can afford the bigger houses on the higher bit of land that's less you know, sinking into the mud. That's the upper residential, that's where the wealthier people go. People who can't afford those houses as much, they're stuck in the lower residential, which is basically mud, rather than an actual island in the swamp. You get what I'm saying? Military, you have to think of a little more abstractly. In this case, the town is so small, they of course don't have a military, uh, they don't even really have a police force. What they do have is a hunt captain who kind of acts as the closest thing they have to like a constable. And actually that's a pretty good transition into how to give yourself NPCs to populate your town with. Now, we all know that we only really need a handful of NPCs to cover the whole population of a town, and I personally like to split this up based on those sperm principles again. So for example, social, here at the Fisherman's Wake, we have uh, the bartender, Hadrian Shea, who owns the tavern, and we have Tamara Andes, who is the waitress. They both work at the tavern, people talk to them, people talk around them, they're a great social center point. Political, my political representative for the town is Judge Willen Breitheart. He's kind of the mayoral figure, he's not technically actually the mayor, but he is he kind of takes that position. Economic, let me think. Look, now I need to pull out my handy dandy DMs binder. It's a good thing it's so organized. Wink. So we got, oh, Hamill, Hamill Burford. Hamill Burford is the ferry runner in the town, so he's the probably the biggest representative of the economic sector. Religious, we have Bliss Burford, she is a priestess of Aristil who works at the temple. And of course military, we have our pseudo-police chief, Alicia Wonstall. So there we've got a really simple way of breaking up your town, thinking about the different buildings that you're going to need, and sort of splitting up different regions of the city or town or society based on that, and giving yourself NPCs based on that as well. The sperm principle, man, it's super useful! So let's take a look at a bigger example. This is Brynaldon. This is the, the next city that my player's are going to go to. By the way, my players aren't allowed to watch this video either. I'm sorry, it's full of spoilers. Daniel, you have to stop the video now. I'm, I'm sorry, I know it's hard. So right here, we've got the city uh, sort of as is, none of it's labeled. You can see much more defined roads and things like that. Because when it comes to bigger cities, that's when you get a little more detailed sort of human practicality. There's this really great guide somewhere online. Hopefully I've saved it and can leave a link in the description below. I think it's done by the guy who does the maps for Game of Thrones actually, but he does a really cool description of how to sort of lay out a city. Honestly, it's the most useful thing I've seen, so. I'll try to find it for you. So, I was thinking about this town, Bryn Alden. What do I know about the town? I know that it uh, is a very old city that originally was kind of uh, built on the tallest hill in this hill country. And the people there originally worshipped this kind of now outdated god, Alden, who was a god of the sun. So, the first thing I know is that they're built on a hill. Great. I know that they're worshipping Alden, so I wanted there to be a temple to the sun at the very top of the hill. Now, if I'm thinking about uh, who's running this place, even before I decide what kind of a political system this city's gonna be run under, what I do know is that the people who are running it are gonna wanna also be at the top of the hill where they get the great fancy person views. So here we got our sort of political stuff going on up here. Economically, I kind of wanted this city to be like a cultural hub, so I wanted almost like the Grand Bazaar kind of a market to, to exist somewhere in the city. That's what we've got over here. I also wanted it to have, uh, to attract a lot of artists and sort of, you know, poets and uh, actors and people like that. So we've got kind of a theater down here. We've got uh, the artist's bar. There's always a player's bar. Militarily, I thought it would be interesting to create a city where it used to have uh, quite a significant military presence, but over time they've kind of stagnated, gotten lazy, it's a little bit more decadent, a little bit more hedonistic, so maybe they still have sort of a 
a soldier guard presence in the city, but it's really not not as uh, actually militaristic as it used to be. But it does have a city guard because it is a big city, and they did used to have this military presence. So then, when it comes to actually building the city, populating it with buildings, uh, what I like to do is just think practically. You got to think about if you come into this city, big city with a big round wall around it, and you want to get to the market. That's why you're here. It's a cultural hub. All the people come here to trade their wares. Well, for starters, we know where the market is built because the market wants to be in the midpoint between the people who have the money, the rich people who are up the hill, and uh, the people who are actually the masses. Then we recognize that people are lazy. So paths are gonna get formed over time as people walk them, you know? So that's how we end up with these weird little curvy bits because people are taking shortcuts, you know? You end up with this weird little kind of courtyard here because people don't want to walk all the way up and then turn right. They want to cut that corner while there's no building there. That's how you end up with some buildings with really weird shapes. That's how you end up with strange little corners. Like, if anyone has ever been to Sydney, Man, oh man. <laughs> it's all funny little alleyways. So that's kind of a thing that happens uh, over time as a city is being built. So that's that. Then, okay, let's start thinking properly about our uh, districts again. So here we go. So let's start up here. We've got Alden Summit. And just below that, but still uh, up the hill a ways, you get Alden's Rise, which is where I imagine all the wealthy people live. They've bought their nice little, like, villas on the side of the hill with an excellent view. Immediately below that we get the Bazaar Plaza. That's kind of a major economic center for this city. Up to the left here we have the Judicial Quarter. That's sort of the area that is, you know, most guards -y. We have the Bellows. This is the very industrial sector of the town. This is where, you know, you have your blacksmiths, you have your people um, you know, your cartwrights, people who are doing, you know, trade work really sort of heavy hand work. So that's another economic sector. Down here we have Artist Alley and the Green. This is a town where stories are told via art and so all the artists live down here and they you know put on plays about things that have happened and they write poetry about things that have happened so you've got this sort of intermingling of art and society there. The Green being more where those artists tend to live and Artist Alley being where they work. And finally the Downs which is again looking at that sort of uh, economic disparity between the wealthy and the poor. The Downs being the place where water runs down the hill and things get muddy and things get gross and that's where all the poor people live. So again, social, political, economic, religious, military. And now I haven't actually uh, populated this city with any confirmed NPCs yet. So let's see what we could do. Let's come up with some of them. It's really easy to throw in a social NPC who is someone who runs a bar or does something similar. So we're gonna have uh, a woman who runs a bar in the Let's put her in between uh, the bellows and the judicial quarter so she kind of hears all the stuff that the workers and the soldiers are talking about. Let's also give ourselves one of the artists because that'll be interesting. How about a halfling who runs a theatre company? That sounds cool. And what it also does is it splits up some social influence uh, across different parts of the city. So depending on where they go, they might meet a different one. Political, the party at this point are at a very low level so they're probably not going to meet many political influencers, but we can probably throw around the name of a senate member who doesn't really want things to change because he's in a position of power and he likes being languid and not spending his time on things, so there's a political power. Economic, let's give ourselves um, a store owner from the bazaar. Maybe someone who's a little bit useless, like he sells armor which is something they'd probably want to go looking for, arms and armor. But all of it's just ornate and uh, sort of decorative. It's just ceremonial and not actually going to be useful to them. Religious, I would like a boots on the ground healer person who hangs around in the downs helping the downtrodden. And I would like maybe a huffy priestly type who's probably her superior. Um, who is kind of annoyed that people are just coming to visit the temple um, to have a look at the sites rather than actually as part of worship. And military, how about we give ourselves captain of the guard. We have to be the captain of the guard. Someone who's really hassled and tired and just hates trying to get all the soldiers to do their jobs. There we go, we've got a bunch of NPCs to go and once I give them names and mannerisms and all sorts, they all fit right into the city and make sense. You see what I'm saying? I hope that that makes sense and you can 
like apply it. Hopefully I've described things in a way that is at least somewhat useful to you. This is how I approach all the towns and cities that I make in my game. And I just find it incredibly useful if I can't work out how to populate the city in particular with NPCs. Sperm principle, all the way. Social, political, economic, religious, military. You got it. And you'll remember it, because it's funny. A bunch of Wolfgang episodes uh, just went up. Some more are going to be coming up with this next moon, the blue moon. It's a silly show about werewolves. If you haven't checked it out yet, please do. It's not a particularly risky investment. All the episodes are less than five minutes, so you can watch the first one, and if you really don't want to watch anymore, that's it. You don't have to. But I really think that you might enjoy it, and it would mean the world to me if you checked it out. Blink, blink, please. Fluttering my eyelashes. So anyway, that's that for now. Apart from that, I do believe that's it. I'm done. Email this to your grandma. I'll see you some other time. It's much harder when I have to stand up to leave. I'm gonna kill my neighbor.